Cross country is a more complicated sport compared to road running or racing on the track. It can be flat and dry, hilly, and depending on where you live, it can be like this. Because of this, success at cross country can be broken down into three components. Overall fitness, cross country fitness and tactics. Overall fitness can be translated across all terrain and is a suggestion on how well a runner should run based off factors such as their lactate threshold. A runner should have similar ability on the cross country as they do on the roads and track, but this isn't always the case. And that's where cross country fitness comes in, which is how the runner is suited to changing paces, running up hills, running through mud, setting off fast, and is usually which runner can survive at the pace for the longest. Tactics are also much more influential in cross country. You need to get a good positioning at the start because it becomes much harder to run around people. Saying that, you also need to know when you're pushing too hard because once you hit a wall in a cross country race, it's a very painful run to the finish line. So how can you optimize your cross country fitness? Firstly, simulating your race environment. This can be done by incorporating fart like training with changing paces or terrain. You can add a fast first rep to simulate having to set off fast in a race. An example workout of this would be five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, and one minute reps with 90 seconds jog recovery in between with the first five minutes being ran hard and more sets can be added, which can be broken up by doing five minutes jog between sets. This should obviously improve overall fitness but also should simulate a lot of cross country running and get you used to what you need to do on race day. Another way to optimize your cross country fitness is strength. Cross country relies more on strength of an athlete over what road and track racing does. Doing workouts which look to improve strength such as longer tempos and hills should help as shown by the Stanford athletes. The current ranked number one college in the men's NCAAs, a 10 mile tempo is a normality for Stanford. The hills provide an added resistance which not only help practice hills for race day but would improve overall fitness levels and strength. We've done a full video on hill training which is linked below. For this video, we also asked some experts what their main tips are for cross country. Firstly, Nico Young, who runs for NAU, has said, because of the variability of terrain and hills, you may feel more fatigued at certain points in the race. It's important to remember it won't last when the course levels off, so don't fall off the pace because you feel fatigued at a certain point. Next, Charles Hicks, the European under 23 cross country champion, has just said, work the hills. And Axel van Christensen, the European under 20 cross country champion, has said you need to know the route, use the right spike length, the muddier the race the longer spikes you need, good starts are important, work your race plan to your strengths and he finally said run hard, cross country isn't easy. So overall the best way to get fit for cross country is to focus on proving your reaction to the variables of cross country. This is changes in paces, you generally have to get used to setting off really fast which is something what is hard to get used to because it builds up lactate and overall would slow you down in the whole of the race and that's also where it comes into play in cross country it's generally who can hold and sustain the pace for the longest rather than who is the fastest runner because everyone is just getting pumped with lactic acid at the start of the race due to having to get a good position in the course hopefully this helps and also if you do have any tips for cross country please comment them down below so everyone can check out the comments and see other tips people have thank you for watching please like subscribe and goodbye